بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> The topic for today's khutbah is fiqh of getting COVID-19 vaccine or Islamic ruling of getting COVID-19 vaccine. I was preparing something else. I actually submitted something else as a topic. But then last week, as we got vaccination first with Pfizer and then uh, the Moderna uh, vaccine, so there was a concern. And I thought most of the global fiqh councils have addressed that. And that would be sufficient for the global Muslim community, their answers. But then I start getting questions locally from our community that we are being offered this vaccination in our workplace. Should we get it? Should we not get it? Um, so I realize that actually I have to address this. Um, just want to address this with two disclaimers. One, uh, I usually don't speak about fiqh issues in the khutbah. I'm pretty sure you, some of you have already noticed that because it, it's not to undermine fiqh because I love learning about fiqh. Uh, I love studying fiqh and I love teaching fiqh also. Uh, but I, I, I personally believe that Juma audience is not meant for high academic fiqh lessons. We can teach them just basic Quran, Sunnah, few hadith here about akhlaq and ma'amlat and that will be sufficient for Juma audience. For fiqh lessons, you need uh, academic classes, especially for high level ishtihad or for fiqh classes for fiqh lessons. Uh, but this uh, will be an exemption. So please uh, pardon me. Uh, I'm seeking apology before I can start that I'll be using some, um, some academic concepts. So inshallah, please pardon me for that. Uh, and second disclaimer is that I will be only speaking on behalf of Islamic ruling perspective, Islamic perspective. I won't be giving any medical fatwa because I'm not a medical doctor. And we have to understand this. One of our problems of our time is that if you will ask a person who have a degree in Islamic Sharia, why don't you speak about this medicine? No, he's not eligible to speak on behalf of medicine unless you are qualified in that. And similarly, medical doctors cannot speak on Islamic law unless they are qualified and trained on that. So we, we have to understand and we have to respect each and everyone's limitation. Um, and also, it's a personal decision whether you want to get vaccine or not consult your medical doctor, primary care physician. But the reason why I'm, I'm speaking about this topic to you is so that we cannot drag Islam into our conversation because this issue is actually political and along with being medical. So I don't want you to have a dual understanding of what Islam is saying. Islam is very clear in terms of harms, in terms of benefit, and that's what we're going to cover so that we cannot drag Islam into our conversation when we are drinking chai and coffee and casually talking about Islam. Okay, let's start. What is the Islamic ruling or fiqh of getting COVID-19 vaccine? The fatawa which I gathered was from Amja, the largest, one of the largest Muslim uh, uh, American fatwa body, American Muslim Jewish Association. Then I gathered from Darul Qasim, then British Islamic Medical Association, uh, then individuals like Sheikh Dr. Mateen Khan, who is a doctor and a sheikh, then Sheikh Dr. Hatim Al-Hajj, who is a sheikh and a doctor, and I even checked uh, Islamic portal UK and other resources before um, uh, making or preparing for this khutbah. Before addressing Islamic ruling, what is it? Is it halal to take vaccine for COVID-19? Is it wajib? Is it makru? Is it mustahab? Is it muba? Before addressing that, I just want you to understand few basic principles in terms of kawaid and in terms of maqasid that will help you to make decision in your normal life. First, First thing I want you to remember that Hifz al Arwah min Ahmi Maqasid al Sharia. The protection and preservation of human life is one of the higher objectives of Islamic law. So we will do all those things possible to protect and to prevent and to preserve human life. And that is why you are even actually being asked that you can sometimes drink alcohol to save your life. You can eat pork. Generally, it's haram, but you can eat pork too. Save your life if you are in that situation because it will going to protect your life. Second principle which we know 
Al-Yasir Ma'fu'an Wa Qad Nuhina An Al-Takalluf Second principle is that trivial things are excused Trivial things are excused and we have been forbidden from being overly technical If there is a large benefit and if there is small discussion focus on the large benefit which will benefit the community Third thing which we need to understand is Allahu yuridu bi ibadihi al-yusr inna dina yusr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants easiness, ease for all of us. He does not want difficulty for us. And he loves that his servants like us avail themselves, avail ourselves of his concession, of his rukhas. Then one of the other principles which we have to understand before we can basically understand the Islamic principle, that tadawi bil muharramat, we have to understand it. At tadawi bil muharramat, ghayr al khamr, Jais in the Jamhur al Ulama. Using alcoholic beverage, even for medical needs, it's prohibited unless there is a genuine durura to save your life, but generally it's prohibited. But using other forbidden substance, other forbidden substance apart from alcoholic beverage, one big group of scholars say it's permissible in medical needs. And then the final statement which we need to understand comes from Imam Mardavi rahimahullah before we can start that مَبْنَى الْأُمُورُ فِي بَابِ التَّدَابِ وَغَيْرِهِ عَلَى غَلَبَةِ الزُّنُونَ فَلَا سَبِيْئِ إِلَى الْيَقِينَ فِي أَكْثَرِ أَحْكَامِ وَلَا حَرَجْ عَلَى الْأَطِبَّاءِ وَالْبَاحِسِينَ فِي بِنَاءِ أَحْكَامِهِمْ عَلَى الظَّنِّ الْغَالِبِ قال المرضاوي حيث قبلنا قول التبيب فإنه يكفي فيه غلبة الظن على صيه من المذهب الحنابلة he said that the basis of judgment in the matters of medicine is probability, not certainty. Every vaccine will not give you 100% result. So he is saying that the basis of judgment in the matters of medicine is probability, not certainty, which is unattainable in most of the cases. There is no blame on physicians, doctors, and researchers when they base their judgment on a greater likelihood. Okay. So in general, basically what these maxims and qawaid and maqasid means, when conflicting benefits and harms are intermixed, what is wanted at that time is to procure the greater good of the community and human being. And if, even if there is a small side effect, but there's a bigger benefit, they should be overlooked if the medicines benefit or weigh the harms. This is the uh, introduction. Just remember this as an introduction. Now coming to the particular issue of COVID-19 vaccine. It is already known that this pandemic have impacted directly almost 70 million people. And I'm talking about direct impact for financial, economical, psychological, emotional, indirect impact. I don't know about that. But these are the numbers from direct impact, more than 70 million people just in few months. And then within them, one and a half million people have passed away. One and a half million deaths, more than them actually, are being reported. So it's already very threatening. It's a global issue, what we are discussing right now. There are few ways to solve this. One is to just allow the infection to grow and circulate so that everyone will develop immunity. And then eventually we might not get it again. But this is not compatible with the Sharia and Islamic law. The, re the reason why it's not uh, compatible with the Islamic law and Sharia because it have harm. You are actually putting others' life into danger. Those who are old age. Those who have Im immunocompromised health. If you will assume that, okay, let's have everyone have it, COVID, and then eventually everyone will develop immunity. Maybe those people won't be there to develop immunity. So there is a harm, and we know the clear hadith, la darara wa la dirara fil Islam. There is no harm in Islam, ad dararu yuzal. Everyone agree on this. The second possibility, which is actually compatible with the Sharia, compatible with the Islamic law and reasoning, is by vaccinating people against the virus. And from Islamic law standpoint, again, I'm not talking about medical science because I'm not qualified for that. From Islamic law standpoint, it is absolutely fine and permissible to take medicine to prevent a disease as long as the contents are halal by majority is it clear actually some scholars moved to the level of it's not only permissible it's recommended mustahab 
you get reward if you will take medicine to prevent from a disease. And some scholars actually took it to the level of wujub. If that disease creates harm, hardship, not only for you, but even for others, like in contagious disease like COVID, then they would take it to the level of wujub, obligatory, you have to take it. وقد ذهب جمهور العلماء الحنفية والشافعية إلى أن التداوي مباح وقد ذهب الشافعية وبعض الحنابلة إلى استحباب Okay Now when some Muslim doctors and councils Islamic fatawa councils saw these vaccines they found out especially two vaccines which are approved from FDA First was Pfizer, and then uh, yesterday it was approved the Moderna's one also. All of the ingredients are halal, and no animal product is used. Because if there is an animal product in the vaccine is used, then the discussion of fiqh will come, oh, if it's impure, it's pure, it's halal. When they check the ingredients, one of the scholars from UK, Maulana Shabir, Yusuf Shabir, he actually emailed Pfizer, and they, got, they emailed him back. They said, one of the ingredient, ingredients you have is cholesterol and cholesterol might have a concern that it might have an animal fat can you clarify and he said it's not an animal fat it's a plant drive source plant plant drive source or synthetic so basically there is no reason for us as a muslim uh, whether a student or a scholar who knows the fiqh to say it is not permissible to use there is no reason for that because from the sharia standpoint there is no evidence we cannot base our judgment based on the waham paranoia or shak it have to be yaqeen or ghalabat al -zan. And as for the suggested risk of the vaccine or side effects of the vaccine, instead of checking on your WhatsApp messages and Facebook posts, go to a medical doctor and talk to him and say, Astaghfirullah, if you are doing this on WhatsApp and spreading false information and rumor, because you are harming more than benefiting the community. Go and talk to your primary care physician if you are really concerned about the uh, side effects of the vaccine. But remember this, if there are bigger benefits and there are smaller discussion, then as a Muslim, you should focus on the bigger benefits. And, and again, the approval of such vaccines is not a decision done by one individual or one doctor. No. Um, in every country, they have a system. We have a Food and Drug Administration, FDA, who have a thorough process of risk and benefit ratio, which is very compatible with the Islamic law, just FYI. And then eventually they were going to approve uh, any medicine or any vaccine. So after discussing all of this from the ingredient standpoint, from Islamic law standpoint, from the usul standpoint, we can clearly see, and I will just repeat what these councils and fatawa have said, that there is no reason to say from Islamic law standpoint that taking vaccine is either makru or haram. There is no reason for that. If a person is saying, ask him for the evidence. Rather, we can say it's absolutely permissible. It's an individual decision whether you want to take it or not. Consult your primary care physician. In some cases, it's recommended. And then it might reach to the level of wujub. If it for saving life in the, in the like of COVID cases, extreme cases. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab. Please <laughs> also note, again, I'm saying this every now and then. Please note that this answer is regarding an Islamic perspective. The decision to use vaccine is in personal decision and you have to go to your primary care physician and he or she can guide you inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect, protect us not only from COVID but from all the spiritual and physical disease. Ameen Ya Rab. Please make dua. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma gzul man qazza ladina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alla ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alana zhamban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta wa la daynan illa qadayta wa la hajata min hawaij al-dunya wa al-akhara illa qadaytaha ya arham al-rahimin wa la maridan illa shafayta wa la maytan illa rahimta wa la dalan illa hadayta ya arham al-rahimin. Allahu Akbar